Ladies and gentlemen, every single month, I do a fundraiser to keep Thor News up and running. And so I got three and a half days left and $720 left to raise. If you would like to contribute, you would be greatly appreciated. I got a snail mail, PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, and Patron. All right, now let's get on with the news. You see, when the sun acts weird, earth weather acts weird, and then people kind of lose their minds. And so we're definitely in a weird zone. And we are watching the big battle between a very deep solar minimum, which has been ongoing for a while, and a solar maximum, which is new and attempting to emerge. We're talking about solar cycle 25. If you add two and a five, that's seven. And we have a new sunspot, AR2759, which is part of the solar cycle 25. So that is exciting. A large or deep solar minimum means a lot of solar wind and increased earthquakes and volcanoes, which we've been seeing. We had a 6.5 earthquake in Idaho today. And the solar displays at the poles has been magnificent for months, if not years. And so we got a sunspot from the next solar cycle. A new sunspot is emergent. The sun's northern hemisphere. Its magnetic polarity identifies it as a member of new solar cycle 25. If the sunspot lasts long enough to receive an official designation, it will become the fourth numbered new cycle sunspot this year, a sign that while solar cycle 25 is still weak, it's gaining steam and solar minimums do not last forever. And we've got solar wind sparking springtime auroras. A solar wind stream hit Earth's magnetic field on the 30th sparking dynamic aurora around the arctic circle the lights descended all the way down to southern sweden where luzax has witnessed the display from garasana beach and he's doing social distancing with the beautiful aurora lights and you know i don't know the colors of the universe always give me hope so that is good news and then you get some crazy floating light pillars. Are these aliens? Maybe. But people say they're just like lights that shoot up out of the sky or whatever. Not everything that looks like an aurora actually is an aurora. But if it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, and it walks like a duck, it's probably a comet. And so I think most of us are keeping an eye on Comet C2019 Y4 Atlas. And we all feel a little bit, a little bit like Atlas today and tomorrow. With the weight of the world on our shoulders. Was this was this one heck of a march or what? I'm glad the Ides are over. But this comet will continue to brighten for about two more months. Hopefully, maybe. Some people had said that comets can be harbingers of doom. And I'll allow it this time, man. You know what I'm saying? And so we are watching uh, Comet Atlas will be passing past Earth in about a week or two. And so we will definitely be on the lookout for increased activity because it does seem like whenever comets get close to the Earth, there is some type of increased earthquake activity. So if you just add it all up, it is definitely going to be interesting days indeed. And so that thing will zip around the sun as all the planets come together. And it's going to be an interesting time indeed. So with two more months to brighten, Comet Atlas has the chance to really be impressive. And comets are like dirty cat dragon snowballs that fly around a interstellar roller rink. Or maybe it's just a galactic roller rink. Or maybe it's a solar system roller rink. You can decide at home. And this one is coming out of Camelio Pardalis. And you want to know how I got good at saying Camelio? I used to be good at it. Camelio Pardalis is because there are a lot of comets that seem to come out of Camelio Pardalis, which is interesting. Very interesting. But yeah, this thing could keep brightening for two more months. It is now at an 8.7 magnitude, which means that, yeah, you might have a chance to see it with your naked eyes. Although you can put on glasses or binoculars if you want. But you can really see it with your naked eye, possibly even in the daytime, if it gets to a 4.5 magnitude. It's like golf. The lower the score, the better. And so this is definitely one of the things we're keeping an eye, our eye on. 
Now I'm going to start talking about the funky stuff, if you want to listen. All right, this is just pure speculation, but I have a feeling that Solar Maximum will have been fully returned by July. And that hopefully, now this is just a hunch or a hope, because we need a light at the end of the tunnel to keep walking towards, that the big problem that is plaguing the world right now will hopefully disappear or at least go way down in severity as solar maximum kicks in, the heat kicks up, and then, but that, you know, Nostradamus said that would happen in the year we're tracking, but it's not something we can put all of the eggs in the basket in. It is definitely something to watch for, to pray for, and to hope for. Um, and so, yeah, it would be nice to get some type of a solar maximum mi miracle anytime between now and July. Although, I wouldn't bet 100% on it. It's just something to keep track of, yo. And if you go back and track through history, you'll see that empires rise and fall during solar minimums and solar maximum. And we've been kind of seeing empires crumbling before our eyes over the last few months and so it would be really 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 great if we could start to see you know civilization the new empires humanity adapting rebuilding and headed back up to a good place but no matter what we are starting to see an increase in activity as this is a coronal mass ejection that happened on the 30th and so I take it as an encouraging sign that the sun is waking up. The circumzenithal arc is fun to say, and it's 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 a really attractive arc. If that's your type of thing. Check out these flipping kicking northern lights. And remember, my theory is the energy from the sun goes into the top of the planet through the auroras, and then it goes into the core of Earth, and that is how Earth grows. Although scientists are like, no, that's not true. I'm pretty sure it is, bro. And hopefully this romantic comedy will get more hilarious. Because if there's one thing we all need more of, it's a little bit more romance and a little bit more comedy. Because laughter is like medicine that heals the soul. And everybody needs a little love, in my opinion. And everybody loves beautiful colors. Maybe. Who knows? But it is definitely going to be a good time for sun watching, star watching, comet watching, keeping your eyes to the sky to see what the heavens have to show us. The signs that are around everywhere. The sun is definitely the star player in this stellar field. And it will be interesting to um, watch its progression. To see what happens next because nobody knows what the sun's gonna do man everybody can take their guesses but the sun is like one of the most magical creatures out in the universe and so it will keep us on our toes guessing and watching but i for one am ready for an amazing solar maximum aren't you all right, everybody stay cool. I am your Planetary Defense Commander. If you would like to contribute to Thor News, I would super appreciate it. Only $720 to go with 300, wait, 3.5 days left. I want to say super thanks again to the Viking Marine and the Hopi Warrior Princess. They are awesome and interesting. Jeffrey, Lynn, Susan, Athena, DDJ, JLL, and Max. I couldn't keep doing this without y'all, so thank y'all very much. God bless everyone, and stay cool. We will make it through this together. Peace out.